What is up mga tropes? Welcome to our channel. Let's continue to discuss the difference between Engineers Australia and Trades Recognition Australia. In Part 1, we have discussed the different requirements needed for a TRA assessment. In this part, we will discuss the different requirements and steps that you have to do to submit an application for Engineers Australia. Before everything else, a little bit of disclaimer. We're not a migration agent and all the tips and tricks that we will discuss in this video is based on our own research and experience. In front of your screen, you will see the MSA application guide for Engineers Australia. This was last updated February 2023. Before starting your application, I highly recommend for everyone to read and examine this document first. Similar to Trades Recognition Australia, the application for EA is all done online. First, you need to create your own account through the EA portal. Once you're done and logged in, you will see different options. For migration purposes, you will obviously choose MSA or Migration Skills Assessment. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated than TRA. Unlike TRA, wherein it's a very straightforward process, there are a few relevant pathways that you can use for MSA application through the EA. First is the Australian Qualification Pathway, which you can choose if your qualification is a fully accredited Australian engineering program by Engineers Australia or is a recognized Australian Associate Degree or Advanced Diploma program. To give you an example, if you graduated here in Australia, then you would choose this pathway. The next three pathways are basically agreements between Australia and different countries. These agreements or accords would allow certain students from different countries to have their qualifications accredited by the Australian government. I will not go into more details for all the accords, but I highly suggest that you check each list if your country is listed on any of the accords. This would actually make your application much easier compared to the last pathway. The last pathway is the Competency Demonstration Report or CDR. In this pathway, you have to demonstrate that your qualifications and experiences are highly relevant to your nominated occupation. Most applicants from the Philippines actually fall under this pathway. I will talk about this pathway in more detail later in this video. Lastly, there are additional assessment services which you can avail. Once you've chosen a pathway, you can begin your application. Basic documents are your passport, your name change documents if any, and your resume. Those are just the basic documents that you need in order to apply for an application in EA. The next document that I'll show you gives you a more detailed guide in order to prepare your migration skills application. The first major requirement that you need to submit is your English language competency. EA recognizes three English language exams for your application, namely IELTS, TOEFL, and PTE. You'll see in this table the minimum scores that you have to get in order to submit an application through EA. However, if you're a citizen from one of the countries below, you are exempted and you don't need to provide an English language test result. As discussed earlier, you need to choose your pathway in order to submit an application. For the purpose of this video, we will only discuss in more detail the different requirements for CDR. As discussed earlier, if your qualification is not from an Australian program or is not part of any accord, you'll need to choose the Competency Demonstration Report Pathway or CDR. Here is a summary of the documentation that you have to provide for a CDR assessment. These include your passport, your ID, your CV or resume, your English language competence, 
your copies of your qualifications, including degree certificates, your academic transcripts, and written statements that list evidence of your continuing professional development. Finally, the last two requirements, which sets the EA apart from the TRA, are the career episodes and summary statements. For the career episodes, you'll need to provide written accounts of three episodes in your career where you've applied your engineering knowledge. The career episodes need to be in English, in essay format, and in the first person. Each career episode should also contain between 1,000 and 2,500 words. They also allow you to apply for an assessment even if you are a recent graduate. If you don't have much work experience yet, you can use your experiences while you were studying. For example, during a major academic project. In contrast to TRA, if you remember during the first episode, it explicitly says there that you have to be working for three years prior to applying for an assessment. And finally, in addition to the career episode essay, you also have to submit a summary statement. The summary statement is an overview of the competencies you've demonstrated in each of your career episodes. Each occupational category would actually have their own summary statement template for you to complete. Let's jump into the documents required for relevant skilled employment assessment. This is an additional service that you can avail wherein they review and endorse your engineering employments. I would say that this is very similar to the migrations points advice that you can avail through TRA. I won't go into much details for the requirements for this additional service because they are quite straightforward. As a summary, I have put together this table comparing the different requirements between EA and TRA. As you can see here, Engineers Australia require more documentation compared to TRA. Regarding fees, TRA is a little bit cheaper than EA. However, if you include additional services such as relevant skill employment or migration points advice, you would actually have almost the same price between the two. Either way, assessment fees are not that cheap. In my case, I chose TRA or Trade Recognition Australia to submit my MSA application. This is because my duties and responsibilities for the past 10 years was more in line with my ANSCO code which was 312313 or Electrical Engineering Technician which can only be assessed through TRA. In the end, the assessment body that you have to apply to will be based on your ANSCO code. This is why I always highlight that the first step is choosing your ANSCO code. This is it for this video. I hope this video gave you a more clear idea on the differences between the TRA and EA skills assessment. I'll see you in the next video. Kita kits mga trops.